Anthony Hamilton coming from where I'm from, and you're listening to our perspective right here on KOFP 103.3. And we're back with uh, our studio in the guest. This is uh, Roger. He is the brother of uh, the centennial um, young man who just commemorated the one year anniversary uh, of his murder by the Fresno Police Department. Reverend Harris, jump into the conversation. Tell us what's going on. I saw the video. Um, it's shocking. It's disturbing. Um, what more can you tell us? Uh, thank you, Lady J, for um, chiming us back in on the show, our perspective. Uh, Reverend Dr. Floyd e. Harris, Jr., international civil rights leader here on the West Coast. Yes, uh, Lady J, we do a lot of heavy lifting. I, I, I forgot earlier to give a shout out to Dr. Gene Kennedy from Atlanta, Georgia, who's, who's uh, my vice president uh, of my civil rights organization, International Network in Action. She was in the studio here uh, last week or so with us before she went back to Atlanta. I just want to thank her for keep doing her good work out there, creating a pipeline from Atlanta to Fresno, California. And, and, and I just want to add that because she's a clinical psychologist and what we're experiencing here is is not only death but it's also psychological warfare so for the people just for the community you know being faced with these type things we need uh, therapy we need counselors we need psychologists to chime in and let us know what impact this is having to our psychology and we have to, we need help Correct. We, we really need help right now. And, 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 and to talk about civilians, yes, we need help. But our police officers need help, too. They work a very stressful job. We recognize that and understand that. But at the same time, accountability has to go on both ends, from police, government, to uh, community as well. And so, again, Lady J, we spoke about the cameras earlier, and that's why we're having a workshop tomorrow. You know, we advocated, you know, I was on the... Uh, police advisory board uh, here with Chief Dyer for a couple of years. Um, and we, you know, hammered out, you know, why we needed uh, our police officers to have cameras on them. So, to, you know, I don't want the public to think that, you know, every time you see Reverend Harris out in the street marching, you know, with my bullhorn, that all I do is just holler and scream. No, there, I have to come to the table to negotiate. I have to come to the table and listen to the people about what they want and come to the table and present what they want and go to bat for what they want. And that was one of the things that we went to bat for is our friend of police officers to uh, have uh, uh, recorders on them so that we can know what's going on out there in the community. And so in this instance, this situation here, I want to give my condolences to the Centennial family. Um, I had an opportunity to meet the mother uh, and the father and the family, brothers and sisters, on the first year anniversary. One of the interesting pieces, uh, Lady J, with the Centennial situation, and, and Brother Roger, we're going to um, get him to come in and, and kind of give give his version of how what happened, how this has impacted um, him uh, as a brother, uh, sisters, the entire family, the community. Um, uh, there, uh, uh, where he lived, right there off of uh, uh, Ventura, Kings Canyon, and I believe it's Orange, right behind a gas station there. Um, but what what what, what, I, what I wanted to say, uh, Lady J, was today, this morning, I uh, posted on Floyd Harris Jr. If those who want to go to Floyd Harris Jr. Facebook, uh, if you want to be a friend of mine, if you don't feel that I'm too radical. Um, uh, inbox me, send me a friend request. But if not, just go to Floyd Harris Jr. Facebook. And I have the uh, chronology of the show today as well as the links of the video and also the anniversary, the first year anniversary. And what was interesting that the brother here sits to my right, Brother Roger, when I went to the, an the an first year anniversary of Freddie Centennial, um, Brother Roger said, you know, Reverend Harris, what's interesting about today? I said, well, what is that, sir? He said, well, this is the ninth month. I said, yes. He said, there's nine brothers and sisters. I said, yes. And he said, we're going to put nine roses to where he last laid. I said, yes. And he said he was shot with nine bullets. And 
I I didn't know what to say. I, I my body went numb for a while, and I, I just you know I, I just I was just speechless to, to hear that. And you know nine brothers, you know the ninth month, and he was shot with nine bullets. And so and this is why I want everyone to go and not take my word for it. You go look for yourself. You know, and, and I'm just going to give a little synopsis of what I've seen on the video. Uh, we did Lady J last Sunday. Uh, we miss you there, my sister. We brought all the families to New Life and Life Church of God. Uh, victims, those who have been abused by police brutality. We brought them all together at New Life and Life Church of God. And all of them had an opportunity to meet each other. And we had a wonderful service. Uh, we had the Native Americans was there. They did the ceremony the sage, uh, we fed everyone some soul food, good soul food cooking, and the Dillon family was there, um, uh, and it, it was just wonderful. We had signs and banners and, you know, posted up on the church inside the social hall on the gate, uh, just, you know, uh, saying that families want justice, and the, the church that I met, we are a social justice church. We, you know, we speak truth to power. You know, we, we don't we don't run from injustice. We run to it. And so I think that's what make our ministry uh, uh, people appeal to us more when, it, when things happen in our community. We're no different from, you know, better than any other ministry, but we just, we just have compassion for those in the community. But getting to this video, uh, Lady J, you know, please go to Floyd Harris Jr. Uh, Facebook and, and look at the video. There's a couple of links on there of when the police officers jumped out of the car, um, uh, and, and I'm counting the, the seconds before they opened the door and before they put nine bullets into uh, Brother Freddie. And, and I'm between, Lady J, between maybe eight, maybe seven, eight seconds. And, and when you roll up on somebody that fast, Lady J, I, mean, I heard you say when we was off, off the for break that you're startled. You're like, wait a minute, what, 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 you know, you know, Fred OBD, you know, get on the ground. And you're like, well, wait a minute, what's, what's going on here? And then within seven seconds, it's pow, 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 and you drop. And so when I looked at the video, and I had to keep looking at it over and over and over and over and over, and Brother Freddie never raised his hands. He never took a step back. He never took a step forward. He just stood there with his hands to his side saying, wait a minute, what, what's going on here? And then he had nine bullets put inside of him. Now note that Br Brother Freddie, from speaking to the family and research I've done, had a mental illness. But because you have a mental illness do not mean that you deserve to die. Many people in our community see things or thought they seen something. And maybe someone called in and said someone was walking around with a that they thought with a weapon or what have you. You know, th that's just someone's what they thought they seen. That doesn't mean that's what it is, right? And so when these police rolled up on this brother Freddie, I mean they and I'm saying, how do you unload nine bullets within someone that has no weapon? And then our chief of police says, you know what, folks, it's justified. And I'm saying to myself, what's justified? Because he had it, he had nothing in his hand that was a weapon to, to make someone be of a threat. So I'm gonna go ahead, Lady J, and, and introduce our uh, our guest here. I'm, I'm happy he's in the studio. Then again, I'm sad that we're here talking about such a horrifying situation that has occurred. Many years, everyone known, I've been, you know, stop police brutality, stop police brutality. I sound like a broken record. And once again, we're here with our brother, Brother Roger. I'd like to welcome you to our show. Uh, welcome to our perspective. We. Our condolences go out, goes out to your family and to you, and, and I know, you know, I see your writings on Facebook, and and I can just feel your pain, and, I, and, and, and you know, and all I can say is, you know, brother, I'm, I'm praying for you, I'm there for you. I mean, I can't speak about what nobody else is doing. All I can do is what I can do. If you need me, I'm there. Their anniversary, 
You know, my church, you have access to it, you and your family. Why don't you kind of walk us through how you feel and where you're at right now with this situation that's taking place with your family and your brother? Now, it's, it's been a year, and um, people say that um, um, pain goes away, and it's been a year, the pain that I'm still feeling for my brother, it feels the same as the, the day that he got shot, the same. It, it doesn't go away. It, it, Yes, in your mind, it, it, it's your mind is, you know, um, you, you think a little bit less, but the pain in your heart and your soul right. is the same, even after a, a year that it happened. And it's just, it's, it's so hard that it, it's, it, I'm having such a hard time because I keep going to that, back to the video, and I try to see what he did wrong, and I can't find nothing, nothing. So, so for the chief to say that it was justified, I want him to clarify what's justified to him. What, what, it, what part of the video was justified? I watched the video a hundred times. I don't see no justification at all. And not, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer. I don't have no PhDs, but I do have common sense. And in the video, there's, uh, yes, there's going to be a lot of people out there that, oh, yeah, well, you know what? The, the, the police has the, the, his right to, 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 to protect his life. Yes, but in my brother's case, protect his life from what? What did my brother do wrong to them, to those two officers? What did he do wrong? Look at the video. It's under Freddy Santana. Look what he did wrong. My brother did nothing wrong. And I, it does, that's the hard part of me that, that I can't, it's hard for me to accept that. Very hard, very hard. Ladies and gentlemen, you can, uh, we're, you're here with uh, Lady J and Reverend Harris, uh, our perspective. Uh, you can go to YouTube and type in Freddie Centennial. You can look at the video for yourself and come with your own perspective. Uh, that's what our show is about. Come with your own perspective. Don't come with my perspective. Have your own perspective. And the perspective that I see here, this was a, a modern day lynching. This was a murder. Uh, this was an execution. Uh, you know, police do not have the right to be the judge, jury, and executor on our streets. They are supposed to protect and serve. I'm not as if you know, I have many retarded snapped on my forehead and don't think that a police officer, if he's in danger, that he has a right to protect, or her to protect himself. This is not that case here. This, this was someone who was just standing and was startled when they jumped out the car. I mean, I myself, the way they jumped out the car, I would look the same way, like, what's, what's going on? Who are you talking to me? And within seven seconds, you get nine bullets pumped in you. And Brother Freddie, again, from my perspective, I did not see him take a step back. I didn't see him take a step forward. I didn't see him say anything. All I seen was him standing there with his hands to his side like, are you talking to me? And, and not only that, Brother Roger, you were saying it was an unmarked police vehicle? Uh, yes, yes it was. And um, in the first report, when, when this happened, when the police did their own, um, I guess, uh, news conference, um, one of, one of, one of them, uh, uh, police 
and for a, I guess a spokesperson for them, said that it was a marked vehicle. When is a Nissan Altima a marked vehicle? It was undercover. It was an undercover car, and they were wearing camouflage. They're, these guys were work for I guess for magic. So um, for them giving that information at that time, why did that they not retract that information? Why did that go back and say, oh, you know, they, they were wrong. It was not a marked vehicle. It was an unmarked vehicle. Can you can you just tell us a little bit about your brother, what kind of person he was, what he was going through at the time? Oh, my brother, uh, cool guy, cool Chicano guy. Um, he loved walking around the neighborhood. He never did no harm to nobody because everybody knew that he had a mental illness. And we've had a lot of interactions with police, a lot. I'm talking every time that he was off his medications, we would have to call police in order for the ambulance to come and take him to the hospital to get medical treatment. So, it's, it's so, so you're saying that there is documentation that, that is, you know, if he was off his medication for whatever reason that you will call for help and they will come and help him. Yes. Not kill him, but yes. help him and assist yes. him to get back to whatever normal stability that he needs to be. Exactly. And, and they are really, the, the, the police men that would show up, or police women that would show up, they already knew him by name. And they were actually, they were super, super nice to him. I'm, I'm not against friends of the police. They are good people. But those two officers, totally, they're wrong. So, so is it fair to say that you're saying that there were or are police officers who knew your brother by first name interact with him? Because I heard some family members say maybe it was you that if he was, you know, uh, walking down the street, they would say, you know, okay, go back in the yard. You know, it's getting kind of late. Um, you know, it's time to go in. They would, there were officers that would really try to work with him, but these two officers. These two that day just came out of nowhere as if this was some kind of gun smoke day and just unloaded. And you know, and, and, what one, and I wonder, the police officers that knew your brother, I wonder how they feel right now. I, I wonder the ones that interacted with him and knew that he wasn't a violent person. I, I wonder what's going through their